Hey, welcome to Bear Mountain today. Today we're going to be doing something a little different. It's about Bokashi. Now, some people want to may want to know what is that and why would you do it? Stay tuned and you'll find out. All right, so some of you may have heard the term Bokashi before and maybe thought it was some kind of Asian tea or something of that, but uh, Bokashi is a Japanese term. And it's kind of, um, it's more of a brand term than I think anything more. Because in Japanese, the translation is kind of hard to find, but it kind of goes along the lines of blur or to reshape. In essence, that what's what, that's what we're doing here today, is Bokashi is a way of anaerobically composting many things that you can't run through your normal compost pile, such as things like meats, greases, um, uh, vegetables that maybe, uh, you know, compost piles might attract uh, rodents or things of that nature. But a lot of it has to do with uh, just food waste that you normally wouldn't put in a compost pile. Um, and, you know, right now, most people just end up throwing it away in their hefty bag in their garbage can and off to the dump it goes. So what we do, though, is we wanted to take that material and we wanted to use it. Uh, we, we recognized it was a significant amount of waste that, you know, really had a nutritional value. So we want to use it in feeding our worms. The idea is we wanted to create kind of a closed loop system in which we could take things that we couldn't put directly into a worm bin but what we could do is pre-treat it in the fermenting bucket, a Bokashi bucket, and then after a couple of weeks of settling in what they call a soil factory, which is a fancy word for a bin with some high carbon material and maybe a little soil in it, to let the microbes basically lower the acid level of the material in the bin itself. How does Bokashi work? There's a lot of things out there on the internet. If you did research on it, you can find a lot of YouTube videos. Um, not going to really, you know, try to, to, to recreate all of that. But the basic science of it is this. The primary thing that's going on in here is called fermentation, anaerobic fermentation. And it's primarily using lactobacillus bacteria species to do it. There are some other minor things in there like yeasts and maybe there are some other minor bacteria, but predominantly what happens in this anaerobic environment is a lactobacillus bacteria feed on the sugars and the carbohydrates that you apply in the bucket and create lactic acid as a byproduct of their fermentation. That lactic acid creates an environment in which pathogens and putrefaction bacteria and all those kinds of things that make the nasty smells and diseases like E. coli and things like that they're basically, the food is consumed faster by the lactobacillus and it suppresses any of those things from happening. So in essence, what we're doing is we're pickling things and then we take that pickled, fermented product. It's not quite ready yet to feed to the worms because it's highly acidic and then we put it into the soil factory. How's the Bokashi been put together? Lots of great videos on DYI. I said, do it yourself, DIY, uh, <laughs> Bokashi bins. Uh, it's really simple. Basically, you need a couple of five gallon buckets. Uh, what This is what's called a gamma seal lid. You can buy them like at Home Depot, which is, I guess you can get it's where I got the bucket. And what that does is it's in the paint department and it's a snap on lid that you then are able to screw shut. It's got a screw on it, so it keeps it airtight, okay? This is a two-stage system. The bottom bucket is to collect anything that leaks out of the bottom of the first bucket. The first bucket with the gamma seal lid, this is where you're gonna end up putting your food waste, has got holes drilled in the bottom. These were 5 16th inch holes, and they're just equally spread across the bottom. Why, you may ask, do you need to do that? Because typically what happens, even if you don't think so, there's quite a bit of moisture left in food waste. Vegetable waste and things of that nature has a significant amount of water in it. As these LAB bacteria begin to break these things down, this water needs a place to flow out of. If you don't empty the bucket out at least once a week, that's what we find, uh, that liquid could end up building up in the bottom of the bucket and the bottom of your bin will start to have problems. 
the LAB will basically begin to drown. They need space. Uh, moisture is good, but saturation is bad. So the whole idea is you don't want the bottom of this to get into uh, a situation where it could putrefy or not pickle right because it had excess moisture in it. That leachate that falls out the bottom, you just dilute that 100 parts of water to one part of the leachate and it makes a great uh, fertilizer to uh, plants. It's mostly lactobacillus, enzymes, water, and a few other proteins and things that, that weren't broken down. They're all good for the soil bacteria. I don't necessarily use it as a foliar feed. I use it as a soil drench. Um, it's, it's really easy to do. Didn't so, you say that there was a change in the Homer bucket that you have to be careful about? Yeah. You look for the older style buckets, either Homer or Lowe's or, or anywhere you can find a five gallon bucket. These guys are all pretty much standard size, so it doesn't matter where you get it. But Ace there Harbor was a, something with the lip. Well, this is interesting. For a Bokashi bucket, you want the thing to seal because that bottom, you don't want air to get into it. Okay. Um, the older style Homer buckets didn't have any extra venting on the, around the lip where the two buckets come together. So there's no way to get air in there. And many people probably can express the frustration of trying to get two buckets apart. There's no stronger force in the world to try to pull two buckets apart. So the folks at Home Depot worked with their supplier and they came up with an interesting solution. They made the buckets more tapered. So there's a little bit of a gap. You know, we're talking like a 30 seconds of an inch gap between them when you stack them. Then they put air vents underneath right where the bucket would rest against the other one. So that's great. The buckets no longer stick together, but from a Bokashi standpoint, you want the buckets to seal tight so you don't want a bucket that has that situation in it. Um, the other thing we do, too, just to help the seal, if you have Vaseline Intensive Care, you know that greasy petroleum jelly, right, that people love to use, maybe older people like us. Um, I use it basically to go into the inside of this. I just take a smear of it all, all around the inside. And when this bucket sits inside, that petroleum jelly will help break any vacuum seal on it because it's a grease. At the same time, it increases the seal and doesn't allow air in. I just do that once at the time when we, uh, after we've cleaned out the bucket from the previous cycle and we're ready to go into the next cycle, we just put a little grease on the inside and then set this bucket on the inside. Once they're set together, if you can look at the inside, you can see the holes in the bottom. There is about a two inch reservoir, two inch deep reservoir at the bottom with the, the bottom bucket. So it can hold quite a bit of moisture, but again, when we fill these things up, key to making this work is you come back at least, you know, especially when you're just starting, you're going to get more moisture out of it. As it ages out, you get less and less. So when you first start, you may want to check this at least twice a week and remove the leachate from it. And that's just a simple process of we lift the bucket up, pour the material out, put the bucket back in as quickly as possible. Uh, if you feel that maybe it's got a little odor down at the bottom that you're not really, doesn't smell pickly or apple cider vinegary, that's an okay odor. That's good. It means things are working. If it smells a little funky, like maybe a little off, take a little bit of your liquid LAB, spray it on the inside before you put the bucket back down. Just helps make sure that you got LAB down in that leachate so when it falls through, it keeps working on it. This LAB is the key to making Bokashi work. Okay, referencing back to our videos on making LAB, one of the steps that we do with LAB for storage, if you, if you can't store it in a refrigerator, the actual LAB serum, you mix it one-to-one -one with brown sugar. Um, brown sugar is a, a simpler sugar. It's got a little bit of molasses in it. Um, and what it does is it helps you just keep adding brown sugar until you super saturate the solution. We'll do a video on how to super saturate, but if you need to know right away, look up Drake, uh, pure KNF. He has a great video on how to saturate a solution that stabilizes it. 
and basically puts the LAB to sleep. Now, when we put the LAB into the Bokashi bucket, we mix it into a spray. We do a pretty heavy dose of it. We take about a tablespoon, or which is about 15 milliliter, and we put it in a, a 15 milliliter or a tablespoon per 250 uh, milliliters, which is marked on the, the uh, spray can right there. So we just take some of that. As you can see, it's like a syrup. This is an LAB syrup. Do you need a funnel? <laughs> well, yeah, sometimes you just gotta be good. Sometimes you make it a little drip. Yeah, sometimes it happens. So we're gonna make up 500 milliliters of solution. Now, the trick we do on our... It's all the sediment at the bottom of the jar. That's the extra brown sugar. That's how you know when you hit super saturation, when the sugar no longer dissolves into the solution, but settles onto the bottom. Is there That's... any use of that? Um, you could put it in your compost pile once you're emptied, uh, you know, empty the LAB out of this entire container, and it'll just feed the bacteria in it. it There's nothing of, wrong with it. Kind of seems like... You know, there's a use for everything. There is, and uh, it would just feed the bacteria in uh, in your compost pile. Okay, so we put two tablespoons in. Now, the next step we're going to do is we're going to add 500 milliliters of lukewarm water. This is an entertaining video right here. We had 100 milliliters or approximate in here before, so we added 500 more, and now we're at approximately 600. The lukewarm water will help wake up the LAB. And what I do is, since there's still some sugar on the bottom, some of the syrup, I just gently kind of swish it around until you can tell that it's all dissolved into the solution. Now, the extra sugar in here, now that it's diluted, the LAB bacteria will wake up very quickly and begin to, uh, if you left this at room temperature, it would, it would quickly exhaust its food source in here and would uh, be basically worthless in a few hours. So the question is, well, what good is it like that? Because what we're going to do is we'll keep this in the fridge. Once you put this guy back down at about 40 degrees, the bacteria's metabolism shuts down. They basically slow down and almost stop. LAB are what are called mesophilic bacteria, meaning they operate best in the same temperature range we do. Like, you know, we all love 72 degrees, light wind, partly cloudy day, right? That's kind of their world too. So they will work, you know, effectively down to about 50 degrees and will work up to somewhere around 90, 95 degrees. What happens is when they start getting out of those extremes, they either go dormant or they perish, you know, depending how cold it gets or how hot it gets. So by putting them at about 40 degrees, you're just a little bit below their, their low range of, of working, so they tend to go dormant. So we put this in the fridge, and that's how we can keep this spray useful for us as we fill the uh, holding bin as we collect our food waste. So how long will it hold? Um, a week, two weeks, easily. Um, it's but just, we'll use it up before we'll then. So we don't mix much more than we're going to be using. In, so you in just week. use it, you make it for a week and yeah. use it in a week, exactly. but it would hold several weeks. Right. The other, I mean, there's several uses for lactic acid bacteria. One of them is to help deodorize things. If you've got a smelly trash can, you know, that you've cleaned out, but maybe it still has a little odor in it. You can just spray a little bit of this around uh, the inside of it. And uh, even though you're not, and I'm not talking soak it, I'm just, you know, a little mist around the inside of it. And within a few hours, the odor will be gone. It's a very strong bacteria that outcompetes the bacteria that make odor. So though, whatever that bacteria that's making odor is feeding on, this will feed on the same stuff and will outcompete it. And basically that's how the odors go bye-bye. So let's take this out and we'll work 
show you the next phase of how we fill our holding bin and how we fill the Bokashi bucket. Okay, so what do we do when we collect things? This bucket, we only fill it um, or add to it maybe twice a week, depending on how things are going. So what do we do on a daily basis is we collect our material in this handy dandy little thing from, um, we got it off of Amazon and it's got a carbon filter on the top if there is any odor and you can see that just an activated carbon filter okay we apply our material in here I just put a paper towel over the what top. What does it contain mostly from us? From us? We tend to be like a lot of nut shells, um, pork chop bones, coffee uh, grounds, coffee grounds uh, paper towels that maybe used to wipe out a greasy pan um, or something of that nature. And um, there is sometimes there's more paper, you know, just depending on what you were doing. Sometimes there's more things that are more cellulose. What we do in the case of, of adding, uh, if we add more paper stuff, which is less carbohydrate, available immediately for the LAB. We just spike it with a little sugar. We use brown sugar, you can use table sugar, and um, that just kind of helps keep the bacteria fed. Now how we, one of the things we do differently than a lot of other people do is, is a lot of other people use the Bokashi grain. We use just a lactobacillus spray. So as we add into this bucket, as we talked about earlier, we keep this in the fridge, right? We just pull it out of the fridge, we're adding stuff to it, we give it a couple squirts, uh, you know, the stuff that's added to it's got a little bit of coating to it, and then we put this back in the fridge, and this bucket keeps getting LAB added to it before we even put it in the Bokashi bin. LAB is a great deodorizer, as we talked about, and it also pre-inoculates things, so you make sure that by the time it does go in the bucket, and you put a little bit more on it, we use this a lot. Don't feel like you got to be chintzy on it. Use it. It's as it, this is the key to making it work. If you're too light on it, then it, it becomes more difficult for uh, things to to catch up. So the material basically we add the LEB as we go, and that way it's pre-inoculated before it goes in the bin. And we also add the sugar in here too if we're putting like a you know maybe got too many paper towels on a particular layer in it. And this will hold a couple of days, a couple of three days for us, depending on who you are and your family and all that kind of stuff, it'll change. This five gallon bucket will take us about two weeks to fill. And so what we've got is a cycle system where we have filled this bucket. There's one that's probably gonna be coming off. We have a three bucket system. And so there'll be one that'll be coming off and be dumped into the next stage of um, you know, after the pre, this is what we call a, a fermented compost. The next stage is aerobic and that will uh, free up a bucket. So we also have a bucket coming in and going out. And ultimately why we're doing this is we're trying to capture this material, pre-process it and feed it to our worms, ultimately turning that into worm castings. And that's what we're gonna use on worm teas and uh, additions to potting mix and things of that nature. So it's a cycled system. We're taking all the kitchen waste, going through the pre-ferment, going through the aerobic, and ultimately feeding the worms, making the castings, and so we just keep the system going. It's so, reduced our garbage. Oh yeah, because one of the things you find out is, you know, when you pull this out of your waste stream, what you're left with is an amazing amount of plastic packaging. Which we're still trying to get rid of too. Sometimes, yeah, it's just almost impossible. <laughs> but if there's anything else that's recyclable in there, we definitely will uh, use it either to feed, particularly if it's got a carbohydrate type thing in it, like cardboard or anything like that, we use that to feed our worms. So let's fill the bucket. We've got our couple days of food waste here. What do we do first thing? The first thing we do as we take a look at the inside, make sure all the holes are open, that they're not, they're not, there's nothing plugging them. Uh, it's pretty clean from the last time, so to speak. It is a compost bucket. What we do is we'll put a piece of scrap newspaper down at the bottom. 
And this is just, uh, just, you know, like one single page. And the idea behind it is it kind of prevents anything that might be small enough in the Bokashi and, and this, this thing as it ferments from dropping through and uh, getting in to the actual mix itself, uh, the leachate below. So the next thing we'll do is we'll take our LAB. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just wet the inside with LAB. Do the sides. Okay, that's just a good wet it down. Now you can see like the top of this guy here has got a lot of paper towels on it. Um, there's some coffee grounds and things of that nature. These have been pre-soaked with LAB. But what we're going to do is we're just going to, the idea is we want to layer it in here a little bit at a time. Let's see, we got a lot of nut shells. Pistachio season. Pistachio season. <laughs> so you got that. And what we do is we just kind of spread it around, make sure it's evenly spread. Now there's a lot of carbohydrate in this particular amount. So what I'm going to do to feed it is I'm just going to put a little sugar. Oh, see, this got all... A little sugar on top, spray with a little more LED. There's no set thing, just keep spraying until you don't want to anymore, until the hand gets tired. And we put another layer in. We got things like sweet potato, pork chop bone, onion tailings, all kinds of fun stuff. We just keep spraying her down. Maybe add a little more sugar because there's some paper in there. And that is the end of it. Well, sort of. There's a little bit of coffee grounds at the bottom here. So now, what is important in this Bokashi is that you get the air out. So you want to spread it around evenly. We'll put a little more sugar in here since we got a little, little bit of excess paper. Spray it down liberally again. We're making sure we got it really soaked. Right. You say there's no smell. There's a smell. There is a smell right now because what you're smelling is is a little bit of the coffee grounds and things of that nature that have uh, but it's not it's not something that's going to escape. Okay, we've got the material in there. We pretty much, you know, you could use a potato masher or anything. I'm just using my my hurry no hurry knife I'm just packing it down making sure it's down nice and tight okay, the last thing we do is we use uh, something on the inside like a lid in this case that's what we're doing and we're just gonna push that down so we're just trying to get the rest of the air out of it okay, then we put on our, our gamma seal lid and make sure that it's on there nice and tight the whole point is we're trying to keep uh, air out so it's on there nice and tight we've got it sealed up good and that's it so some questions again some people may say why do you want to go through this effort number one standard aerobic composting can't take the things that we can put in here we can basically run just about everything through here number two the fermentation process is mesophilic, meaning that it does not uh, release much carbon dioxide and doesn't release methane, doesn't release ammonia, or any of the other things that may be possible being released from either an anaerobic compost pile or an aerobic compost pile you have to turn all the time. Number two, you don't, or three, I guess, you don't have to turn this. Uh, basically, you just keep packing it until it's done. Um, when you get finished, 
um, packing it as an example we pushed it down the lid on it so the next time we come through and we're ready to add again in a couple of days we'll take the lid off remove the inner lid spray it down again with LAB and do the exact same process and keep pushing it down pushing it down pushing it down we'll check this guy in a couple of days to see if there's any leachate in it once again, leachate is... Leachate is the excess water that comes from as the LAB begins to break down things on the inside. And it's good stuff. It's good stuff. It's basically, but it's very acidic. So do never, never, do not apply this directly to the foliage of your plants or the ground without diluting it at least 100 parts of water to one part of this leachate. Okay then the acidity is down to next to nothing. But the, the good thing, stuff is the still good there. good stuff is still there. Okay, plants and the microbes in the soil don't need huge blasts of anything. So they're gonna take that material and they're gonna use it you know, for themselves. Lactic acid, when exposed to air, oxidizes. And it oxidizes into a form that microbes can use pretty quickly. So dilution is the key to applying that material. Next question. The solid part. The solids. What do you do with that after you've okay. got everything you can? Going back through it again, the next step, this is fermented. Okay, do not apply it to your worm bin directly. It is highly acidic. Worms may get used to it, but they're most likely gonna try to stay away from it. Um, you want to be able to mix this with aerobic bacterias so what we do, and we'll show this in another video, how we put together the, the transition step from taking this pickled fermented stuff and creating it into something that worms can use. Um, why are we doing it at this time of the year? Is this necessary to do it at this time? Okay, this is January. One of the things uh, that we're doing is, is we're trying to get the system down. So part of it is like, uh, what do we need to buy? What do we need to make? How much do we need to have to keep a cycle going? Um, so all these things are kind of working out the bugs out of it right now. But the whole point on it, what it looks like to me is it's going to take maybe, uh, including feeding the worm bins, uh, if I take a half hour a week on it, I'll be surprised. Um, I think it's just uh, so it's just our learning it's curve. just the learning curve right now you know how many bins do we need how many how many Bokashi bins do we need um, you know what's the cycle as it flows through uh, how long does it take one of the things we notice that people don't talk about in Bokashi they all say oh when you finish it and it's sealed up in the bucket you just need to let it go for two weeks and it'll be pickled important point here on this is two weeks at room temperature will most likely pretty much finish the process on the ferment. Okay, we're not keeping this in the house. No. This is in the garage. <laughs> and it's Our like very so fancy finished garage. Overwintered, overwintered worm bins on a heat mat keep, kept gently at somewhere right around 65 degrees. This means that the actual worm or excuse me, the actual Bokashi bin itself is probably closer to 55 to 60. That significantly slows down the process. What that means is when you finish a bucket for us, it's about four to five weeks, then it's finished with the is ferment. It, is it absolutely necessary to be fast? No, not in this particular case. That's what we're looking at. We think what's gonna happen is, is the temperatures warm up you know, in this the summer, will speed up. it's going to get close to that two weeks, so it's going to go boom, boom, boom. But in winter time, it's going to slow down. But we're trying doing it now, even how, if it takes longer just to learn it. Right, that's part of it. The other thing is, is what you begin to notice, and we'll cover this uh, when we do the uh, the after the pickling, is you'll notice that the um, material looks exactly the same as you put it into it but it's not it's actually very fundamentally changed what did did you mention the other day that you were looking at a one of our other buckets that was done mm -hmm. and it contained a turkey yeah we uh our first uh five gallon tote of this we did we put in the thanksgiving turkey carcass after we made some stock out of it but there's still bones and cartilage and all that kind of stuff and uh, it went through the, the pickling ferment process. 
we uh, emptied it into the secondary uh, aerobic process outside, but all that was left from that carcass was the big bones uh, and uh, the meat and everything like that was totally gone. There was no smell, no putrefaction, nothing. It just had been consumed. And um, so what we do with the bones afterwards is uh, we'll take those uh, poultry bones we can't use, but any kind of like pork rib bones or anything like that we can use, we'll make uh, calcium phosphate uh, to add to the plants. We'll make that out of that. Okay, last question is why are we going through the effort to do this? We talked about, you know, feeding the worms and trying to take stuff out of the waste stream. And it's good for our flowers. It's good for our flowers. Um, we do use a fair amount of paper products, but a lot of the paper products we try to buy are from what are called FSC certified sources. So meaning that they're using sustainable growing practices and you know we got to take them for their word at that. But ultimately in the end um, we do still have to use plastic. We use plastic somewhat in some cases in our, our flower farming. We're trying to get away from that too but you know plastic is ubiquitous and as, as we talked about earlier, that's kind of what's left from the waste stream once you pull out food waste. But there is a significant amount of food waste just in a natural sense that in urban areas and things that go into landfills. And that's what creates methane gas, biogas, all that other kind of stuff that, that is uh, not really great to put out into the atmosphere. This process takes all that out and keeps that carbon in a form that ultimately, uh, to feeding the worms with the biology, gets it back into the plant. Ultimately, it's a cycle of things that we're trying to do, and that's why we're trying to do it. It's not perfect, this is just our way of attempting it, and we still have, I think, more things to, to work out on it. But we just wanted to share this with you today. It's an easy thing to do. Cost of these buckets, we're probably talking 12 bucks. You the know, lid's probably the, the most lid's probably the most expensive part. Um, somewhere that can hold your indoor compost. Yep. That's yeah. That you know, but that's it's totally usable for years. And it really so. doesn't smell in my house. No, not at all. So. And you know, ultimately we feed the worms, and which ultimately feed the plants. So we just kind of keep the whole system going. Well, anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching today, and uh, we've got lots of other videos on different topics out there. So please feel free to look through the playlists and all that. And thanks again for watching today. You know, hit the thumbs up if you can. Subscribe if you haven't. And we want you all to have a great day. Bye.